Hello everyone, welcome to my latest video. Today we are looking at my newest build that I'm making for a friend that I've actually built. And it's it's a very nice build, I must say. So let's get started. First of all, I had to choose a CPU. I'm a AMD fanboy lately. <laughs> so I went with the 5600 and Paired with the with the cooler with Celentium PC Fera 5. I was able to snatch it on the used market for about $140. Because considering I'm not in USA, it was a good price for me, for my country. It was a good deal. So I've got a I've got a CPU and the cooler combo. For about one forty dollars used, which was fine, which is a good deal, and I, obviously I've overcloned the CPU to about four point three gigahertz. It was stable, but then, considering I'm giving away this PC to a friend, I da I put it down a notch just just to be sure, just to be super stable, just to not have any issues whatsoever. Then. Pairing the, pairing, with, uh, pairing the CPU up with the motherboard, I chose the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite. Mainly because when I chose the case, the end of the Signum 300, uh, I chose the ARGB version. And this is one of the boards, one of the few boards in this price bracket that actually had ARGB headers. So. It was quite surprising for me that I couldn't find any other brand or manufacturer or motherboard that would really have ARGB uh, ARGB headers. I don't know what's what's with that. Every every board only had RGB headers, the twelve volt ones, which is fine. But I had ARGB, so I went with the. That was the main reason for me to choose the B550 Aorus Elite from Gigabyte. <laughs> then, for it to make it even more pretty, even prettier, I went with the Kingston Fury, 32, 32 gigs of CL16 memory, 3200. Super reliable, super stable. They look really nice with the RGB version. And I've paid for them uh, 108 dollars. <laughs> so as you can see, that's about 40, 40 more than we would pay in America. Yeah, and for the motherboard, I paid about 110, which is overpriced as well. <laughs> and my total cost, I'll get to the total cost later. So, uh, the RAM has been running fine. I got the RAM new as well as the motherboard. I couldn't find a good used motherboard or the RAM at my location. So I just went with the new ones. Next, we got Samsung 970 EVO Plus 1TB NVMe hard drive, which I snatched for $62. <laughs> And in here, on Amazon, you can get it for 50. So, yeah, markup, yay. <laughs> then we're getting to the, to the GPU, which is the, like the most important part. I went with the, with a used GPU, actually. I was able to find a deal in my country for this exact, color, this exact card, the Asus Dual. RTX 3070 for, uh, I got it for $265, which was a good deal, which was an amazing find for me. And it really performs well. It's super silent. It looks like it's almost brand new. So that's a plus. And I paired it with, uh, I packed everything into a Signum 300 from Endorphy. This price is just bullshit. <laughs> it's one of the cheaper case. I paid $90 for it. 
for the ARGB version with ARGB fans included, which I really wanted because we need RGB in this build. Because the person is just, yeah, just a good artist. And I wanted to make, uh, make the PC look very pretty. That's why I ran with all the RGB traces. And to finish it, I chose EVGA 750 GQ, 750 80 plus gold power supply. It's semi modular, so it's convenient. You don't need to have all the cables connected to the, uh, to, the <laughs> to the power supply. And yeah, it's it has black sleeve in. It's super nice. It's, it's running super quiet, it has echo mode, it's running super quiet, it looks very reliable and high quality from EVGA. And I, and I got that for how much? $76. Which is decent. <laughs> and the overall cost for this build, considering I'm not living in the USA, was eight hundred and fifty dollars, which was good, which is a good amount of money. But yeah, it was considering it was a good deal for my country. But I, if I was living in the USA, I could probably snatch everything for about seven hundred dollars. I'm pretty confident about that. So I could have saved. Well, maybe not under 700, but 7, 730, totally possible. But me not living in the USA, yeah. <laughs> That's about it. And now we can look at some numbers. We can look at some benchmarks, because I ran them as well. Starting off with 3D Mark. Let's go. So, it's got 12,470 12, points overall, almost 14k in the graphics score, which is to be expected. It's a 3070, super good GPU, still nowadays. Almost 8k CPU, I've overclocked the GPU slightly as well, and just pumped it up a bit, like 50 MHz, out the power target and everything. So, for it to be even a little bit faster, it's in a bench. It ran 11k on multi, on multi core, and about 15, 1600 on single core, which is to be expected. It's still very good for the CPU. So even though those are used parts, they're still running very well. And then you can see my <coughs> screenshotting magic has disappeared. <laughs> this is from uh, Cyberpunk. I run Cyberpunk. This is for on RT, the over, 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 over the highest preset you can select. I even, I didn't mess up with the preset. I just went, ran with the preset. It has RT, max RT on. Unfortunately, it enables DLSS. But this to be, uh, this to be expected just to compensate. It was run on 1080p. I didn't have it connected to 1440p uh, display. But still, on 1080p, Cyberpunk, super highest preset. The highest, highest of them all. With ray tracing. It ran on 40 Average, which is not bad. That might still be playable with minimums of 32. I would say that's it's on the edge of playable for the setting. But you can bump it down a bit. This is still with ray tracing. This is ray tracing ultra preset. And it ran way better. 74 FPS average. And 50 minimums. I would say this is totally playable, especially if you still got 
60 or 75 Hz display, this is super fine. If you got some high refresh rate, yeah, you might not be used to lower FPS, but you can tweak the settings. And so this is still completely, completely over spec for 1080p, I would say. And then I went with the ultra setting without ray tracing, it has no DLSS, so it's pure 1080p ultra. And it ran well. You see, the ray tracing impact is still is still there and it's still very very big, still massive one. While it ran on average on 112 FPS, which is super playable. That's awesome. Of course, I ran Cinebench as well. You can see the scores. 8600 almost on multi core and over 2K on single core, which is to be expected for the CPU. It's above average. All right, as I looked at the chart. And last but not least, we got Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can see it was slightly CPU bottle-like sometimes, but not really, not really that much. In some scenes, slightly, but on average, on 1080p highest settings, it was still producing over 160 FPS on average, 168 on average, which is, yeah, that's totally, totally playable. I would say this, uh, this setup is more suited for 1440p for display. For, yes, for 1440p gaming. So it's not so heavily bound on the CPU side and the GPU gets more utilized, but still amazing was good. So how would I rate it? It's fast. It's faster than my personal rig in terms of gaming. It's faster than my 2080 super. It's not as fast as 5600X on the CPU side. As obviously the 5900X has the double amount of cores, which makes a bit big difference. But yeah, I would say it's an awesome build that I was able to put up. It's a great budget build for my country. And I think it's a nice, oops. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's a great build and I'll see you at another video. See ya. Bye.